It's 8.30. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lon McAllister in George Agnew Chamberlain's Scudder Who, Scudder Hay on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize a story by George Agnew Chamberlain called Scudder Who, Scudder Hay. A somewhat exciting title, well matching the story of a boy whose love for animals filled his heart and mind and nourished the spirit from which eventually he drew a lasting personal happiness. Now, a love of animals is one of the simplest and best ways in which a boy can come to terms with life. And I must admit, I like Mr. Chamberlain's story just because it's about this. Behind its charm and appeal, there is that deeper meaning which every one of us who loves a dog or a horse knows by heart. To play the part of the hero, we couldn't have chosen better than an actor who not so long ago was a boy himself. One of Hollywood's most promising young actors, Lon McAllister. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss, before we begin the first act of Scudder Who, Scudder Hay. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste, that hallmark on the back is your guide. Like the sterling on silver, it's a mark of distinction that all quickly recognize. And it tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting George Agnew Chamberlain, Scudder Who, Scudder Hay, starring Lon McAllister. The earth comes alive in the springtime, and so does the heart of a boy. The branches of trees quiver with new life, shaking off the sleepiness of winter. The birds dance in the wind. The snow that lay silent on the hills melts with the first touch of sunbeams and joins the mighty silver rush of streams and brooks as they hurry to a waiting sea. Now, Dominey is only 18, but the magic of youngness in springtime makes him feel 18 cubits high, makes him want to leap the fences of the Dominey farm as if he wore 20 league boots. Snug Dominey is in love, but with nobody to whisper his love to, no living creature to share all the wonder of an 18-year-old springtime. Pa? Yes, yeah, Snug? Give me a hand for a second. I'm winding my fishing line. For sure, Snug. You hold the pole up, Bridget, and I'll get the knots out in the twinkling. Nils Dominey, you get back to work. Uh, it's your missus, Pa. Yeah, yeah, I know, boy. You don't care much for your stepma, do you, Snug? I'd rather not say, Pa. Well, you don't have to tell me. I know. You hate her the way tomatoes hate rain. Suppose I do, too. Nils! You got ears? Did you hear what I said? Yeah, woman, I heard How her. long are you going to stand around playing games with your no-good son when there's a pasture to be plowed, money to be made? Who do you want us to starve? That finishes it. Woman, I'm sick to death of your yarping and carping. You don't dare talk to me that way. Well, I'm through. I'm not a farming man. I'm a seafaring man. And that's where I'm going. You don't dare. Watch me walk away as I am with naught but two feet and my two good hands. Now, right now. Pa. Milk, you come back here. You hear me, you no good? Come back here. Pa, you done it good. You told her good. Yeah, I fixed her right. Pa, I'm going to. You got to take me with you. If you can ship out, so can I. No, no, Snug, no, no. You got to go back. I, I won't do it, Pa. Oh, hang around is all I ask, son. Hang around until you find out for yourself what it is you really want. Every man's got to find one great love in his life. Sometimes it's a woman. Sometimes it's a thing, like the sea. Sometimes you're lucky and you find both. 
I hope you are lucky, Snug. But if you find it, and when you find it, make it a part of your life. Part of 24 hours of every day you live. Good hunting, Snug. And goodbye. Goodbye, Pa. Happy sailing. Mr. McGill. Uh, what you doing there, mooning at the side of the road like a lost ram? Well, my paw's left, and I've sure got no hankering to go back to the Domini farm. Well, a husky lad like you has no call to fence it. How'd you like to work for me? Maybe. How much? Oh, $10 a week with dinner, Sundays off, and sleep to home. Starting now. You can ride into town with me. Got to size me up a team of mules. Mules? Yep. Yeah. Here's the ad right here. Plain as day. Print it up big in the weekly courier. For sale. Two prime Texas mules in good condition, only $300. Mules. I think I'd like that. Meeting up with a pair of mules. Prime Texas mules. Move over, Roar. You just got yourself a hired hand. Will ya? Aren't they beauties? Seventeen hands at the withers, plenty thick necks and good gray coats. Oh, creamy white's more their color, Roar. And look at them ears. Mighty ears, standing up as if they was they was paying attention to the whole wide world. <laughs> you like them all right, huh? Oh, I like them fine. Well, so do I. I'm going in and buy them. You wait here, Snuff. Okay. Say, you, uh, you, you the stable boy? Yep. Well, tell me something. What ails them mules? Can't tell you, Sonny. Well, I'll keep your secret. Well... All right, boy. Here's the straight facts. Them is one driver mules. One driver mules? Yep. Ever since their driver got killed in the war, nobody else can take them out. When it comes to driving, they just won't. What's their names? One's Moonbeam, t'other's Crowder. Hello there, Moonbeam. Howdy, Crowder. My name is Snug. All right, boy. Tie him up to the back of the car. I can't wait to get them bridled up and watch them pull. I'm looking forward to that, too, Roar. Hey, Ma, look what Pa brought home. Mules, two of them. Handle them easy, Snug. On time, get them into the barn. I'll give them a ride later. What are you doing here, Snug? Gonna work for your Pa. How does that set with you, Rad? Makes no never mind one way or the other. After chores, um, will you go walking with me sometime? Around twilight time, Rad? Oh, grow up, Snug. You're just a kid. Well, I'm a whole year older than you. Well, you ain't a man yet. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Anyone ever ever tell you your, your hair is like ripe wheat or the color of the rising sun? Oh, go help Pa with the mule, Snug. Sure, Rad. Sure. Come on, Crowder. Come on, Moonbeam. Who's that? It's me, Tony. Snug. Mind if I come into your shack for a spell? Oh, howdy, boy. Beautiful twilight, ain't it? Is it? I hadn't noticed. Yeah, all right, Snug. Spill it to old Tony. What's eating away at you? Well, I ain't got no place to go, Tony. I, I can't go back to Dominey Farm and face my stepma, and Rad won't even look at me twice. Yeah, you just got the self-pity, Snug. You know, man ought to get acquainted with the way a mule thinks. Now, a mule never feels sorry for himself. You know about mules, Tony? I sure do. Toughest critter God ever made, and the gentlest. And the most sensible. Roar McGill just bought himself a pair of mules for only $300. What's wrong with them? Nothing. Uh, Tony, you ever hear of one-driver mules? Sure. That's a blemish. Well, are, are they dumb or what? Oh, I don't ever use that word around a mule. Think mules it's dumb. It's folks. Well, I know how dumb I am, Tony, but... But how do you make critters love you? <laughs> you talking about mules, boy, or about female girls? 
Yes, for instance, that blue-eyed peaches and cream one, that Rad McGill. I'm talking about mules, Tony. I remember your ma, Snug. Your real ma. She always said, some as pretty faces. I remember. But them as doesn't has to make up for it with extra loving hearts. Yeah, it's a trick, son. With mules and with peaches and cream girls, too. Tony! Tony, you seen Snug? It's Rad. Mm-hmm. Snug! Pa tried to bridle the mules and they kicked so it made him mad. Now he's beating him with a pitchfork and threatening to kill him. Come quick! Come on, Tony. We gotta save them mules. Where's the gun? Get my gun. I'll tell him. Stop it, Roy. You Come. mustn't hurt him. Well, there's no law against butchering your own stock. Get down, you dumb critter. Four three hundred dollars is a lot of money. That's cheap. Fetch my gun, I say. Listen to me, Roar. Listen just for a minute. I- I'll buy them. What? Yeah, I'll pay you $5 a week for a whole year. $5 a week out of your wages? All right, done. Now, four witnesses here. Here's the deal. You pay me $5 before sunset each Saturday night for a whole year. And if you don't, the mules again become my property. You agree to that? I, I agree. All right. Now, smart boy, let me see you get your property out of my barn. Come on, Tony. Now, no easy moonbeam. Top of the evening to you, Crowder. He is fine mules, boy. I don't know what good they are if they can't be drove. Maybe you'll find a way. Up. Come on, let's go, moonbeam. Going for a walk, Crowder. Well, I'll be blamed. They're following the boy. <laughs> you see, what did I tell you? They're smart as blazes. Right this way, moonbeam. Come on, follow along, Crowder. Hup, come on. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something, Snug. There's a cry other than hup or get up. It's kind of mystic. Designed to reach a mule's heart. What kind of a cry, Tony? Uh, you won't find it in any book nor in the memory of many living men. Works kind of magic with mules. But you got to save it for a big occasion. Something special. Bigger than a job or money or anything. Tell it to me, Tony. What's the cry? Yeah, you just lean over... And you say to him, Scudder who, Scudder hey. Scudder who, Scudder hey. I'll remember that, Tony. And we'll save it for a real special time. Scudder who, Scudder hey. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Scudder Who, Scudder Hay, starring Lon McAllister. You know, words and the way they are used are one of the most powerful forces in our lives. They have the power to deepen the affection of those we love, to heighten their happiness, to comfort their sorrow. We all know this and know how important it is to find the right words to express our feelings. Perhaps that's why most of us, when we try to put words on paper, find ourselves chewing on the end of a pencil. It's here that Hallmark cards can help. Because of the almost endless variety and the great care given to the wording of every Hallmark card, you will find a Hallmark card that seems to have been written especially for you. The words so accurately and beautifully express your feelings. Equally important when you select a Hallmark card is the comfortable knowledge that you will find these words surrounded by beauty and presented in the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. That's why it's so easy to find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it and to find one for every person, every occasion you want to remember. It's because of standards like these that people everywhere have come to look for the hallmark on the back of their greeting cards. They know that, like sterling on silver, the hallmark on the back is a mark of distinction that all quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of Scudder Who, Scudder Hay, starring Lon McAllister. Daniel's snug dominie has made a discovery, greater than reaching the North Pole or finding gold in his backyard. He has discovered a girl, but Rad seems almost beyond reach, and when Snug sees her face, it gives him the hollow feeling of a hungry kid on the wrong side of a bakery window. And to cover up his loneliness, he tries to meet the challenge of two mules. 
two one-driver mules. Got to get them bridled up, Tony, and we got to drive them. It's awful important. That's a fast note. Easy does it. Yeah. Hey, yeah, boy. Little bail and wire. And the bridle and pull straps are all set to hitch them up. Thanks, Tony. Now, if I talk to them real sweet, do you think they'll stand still? Try it. Steady, Moonbeam. Oh, look at them ears. Quiet, Crowder. We ain't gonna hurt you none. Real gentle, now honest. There. Tony, Moonbeam stood still. She didn't even twitch a muscle. <laughs> it's good. You got respect for her. Now, Crowder, just a little of the same. Easy. Easy. He done it. I bridled him. All they ask is common respect, like you should have for all of God's creatures. I, I said to myself, they're not stubborn. They're my friends. That's what done it, boy. The man that comes in the mule with thoughts in his mind of fighting it is going to get fought back. Mules know what you think. Hitch up the wagon and, and try to ride him, Tony. Me? No. Hey, you've got to ride him, Snug. Well, all right. But, but you know, I, I think this light wagon is, is kind of an insult to him. Maybe they can't be bothered pulling such a trifle. See, how about this fallen log? You always wanted it moved. I, if we hitch the tow chain to it, well, that's a challenge for anybody. Would you got to ride him, Snug? Where's the chain? Uh, right over yonder. You just tell me where you want your old log pulled, and I'll bet you anything Moonbeam and Crowder will haul it. Here. Here we be. Now, help me hitch it up, Tony. All right, boy. Yeah, steady now. There we be. Yeah. These reins belong in your hands. Thanks, Tony. You got a mighty job of pulling to do now, Moonbeam. You got a job worthy of all them muscles, Crowder. Now do it good. Pull it good. Hop! Tony, they ain't listening. Give them time. They're getting the feel of it. Sizing the job up in their minds. This is an important time. The first one, Tony. Should I use the cry? The man no, 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 boy. Not now, not yet. Just keep calling him by name. With affection. Hop, Moonbeam. Do it good, Crowder. They're moving, Tony. They're pulling. Real good and strong and steady. They're driving for me. Hey, that gold mine you got there, boy. Any log and camp in the neighborhood will hire a couple of mules like that when there's a man like you who can drive them. A man like me, Tony? Yeah, a man. Pirate tarnation, you bet. I told you I quit, you roar. I got a job hauling logs with the mule team. Pays plenty good, too. Twelve dollars a day. Twelve dollars a day. With my mules? They ain't your mules now, Roy. We got a bargain. They're my mules if you don't pay me the five dollars you owe me before sundown. It's a Saturday night. And what's due's due. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Roy. Y you see, I, I got a whole heap of money coming, but but at the logging camp, they don't pay up until Monday. So if you'll just give me until Monday... Not me. Not for a second. Ten more minutes when them mules are mine again, I'm going to drive them or I'm going to kill them. Sell their weight for glue. Roy, you wouldn't do that. Not to Moonbeam and Crowder. I'm going to get the sheriff so we can make this good and legal. Roar! You can kiss them mules goodbye right now, smart boy. Oh, you... you can't. Nog. Oh. Hello, Rad. I heard. Will you do me a big favor, Snog? What kind of favor? Well, I... I got some money here. I've been putting it away for a party dress, but... I want you to have it. Here. Five dollars. I'll pay you back Monday, sure. Oh, you don't have to. But, but Roar is your own paw. Go on, run after him and give it to him, Snug. And then, well, remember once you asked me if I'd go walking with you in the twilight? Mm-hmm. It's almost twilight, Snug. I'll be right back. Roar! Roar, you shouting baboon! Here's your blame five dollars. <laughs> Rad, there's, there's so many things a fellow like me wants to say to a, a girl like you, but they, they just can't be hitched up into words. I know, Snob. There's a, a something that takes place in a quietness. Togetherness don't arrive from words. 
I never wrote a book to you either, Snot. Funny thing is, I, I thought you'd never even look at me twice. You were the kid down the road, the kid on the Domini farm. But all of a sudden, like, I saw you one day. And you weren't a boy anymore, Snug. You were strong and sure, and, and you held the whole world in your hand. I know what done it, Rad. I know. Learning how to, how to love changes a boy into a man. My pa told me it would happen. And it's just like Pa's fist coming back to help me fight. And Pa's heart helping mine to beat faster. I remember how he said it, too. Sometimes it's a woman. Sometimes it's a thing. Sometimes you're lucky and you find both. I hope you're lucky, he said. But if you find it, and when you find it, make it part of your life. Part of 24 hours of every day you live. There you be, Rad. My pa's words proposing to you. I want you to be a part of, of every day I live. Oh, Snug. You don't have to write me a book, Rad. I know. I know. and bring your mule. Sure, Rad. What's up? Well, you know, Pa got so blaming, busting mad about you and your mules that he bought himself a tractor, a big mechanical giant. But now he's got it stuck midfield in the mud and he's shot him, so I'm afraid he's going to bust a blood vessel. Moon Demon Crowder and me will fix him. But he says he'll kill you if you ever come on his land. He's that mad. Well, that'd be a harsh way to treat me if, if I'm going to be his son-in-law. Every time I even start to mention your name, he shuts me up with a holler. <laughs> come on. Up to him. Up. Kind of stuck, ain't you? That's what you'll be if you don't get. Well, the way you're fixed, if the ground hardens, you'll need dynamite to get loose. Bet me and my mules could pull you out. Ah, uh, you farm bum, what do you got to bet? Well, if I don't pull out that tractor before sundown, you get the mules and me as a hand for a whole year. What? Huh? But if I do, I owe you nothing. And you give Rad and me your blessings, if she'll have me. You're on. What girl with sense would fall for the likes of you anyway? Come on, Moonbeam. Come on, Crowder. We got work to do. All right, Mr. Roar and McGill. We're all hitched up and ready to move. Do it good, snug boy. Oh, please, please, God, make it work. All right, Moonbeam. It's time now, Crowder. Pull good. Hup! <laughs> ah, you see? They don't move. Them dumb, no-good mules, they don't budge an inch. Hold your voice down to a holler, Mr. Roar McGill. The mules is just getting the feel of the load, testing it with their hearts and their muscles. Yeah, and with their brains, figuring just how important it is. Hup! They're not budging an inch, smart boy. What person in his right mind could expect dumb beasts to do what a machine can't? What machine's got a heart, Roar? Use it now, Snug. Now's the time. I know it is, Tony. Now's the time. Now listen to me, Moonbeam. Perk up those beautiful ears, Crowder, and listen. Scatter who? hey! Feel to the right. A try on the left. See them bellies kiss the ground. Now straighten up and pull. This is for Rad, Moonbeam. This is for Rad and Snug. Together always. Now pull. Attaboy, pull. Scatter who? Scatter hey! They're doing it. They're doing it. Watch them babies pull. Right out of the mud goes your tractor. Oh, snug, snug. Scudder, ho, scudder, hey. Scudder, ho, scudder, hey. McAllister and James Hilton will return in a moment. 
You know, there's a fascinating history surrounding the word Hallmark that has its parallel in the public's preference for Hallmark cards today. Back in the 13th century, in the reign of Edward III, the Hallmark Law was passed requiring that every silversmith guild in England use an identifying Hallmark. The Hallmark of a particular group became famous and respected in direct proportion to the skill and artistic abilities of the people who made it. And today, collectors of old English silver can quickly judge the worth of a piece by looking for the Hallmark on the back. Also today, discriminating people recognize Hallmark on the back of a greeting card as they have found through the years that hallmark on the back of a card has a meaning of its own. It represents the skill of craftsmen who for years have designed greeting cards with but one thought in mind. To give you a card you'll be proud to send and one that will be received with pleasure because it says what you want to say, the way you want to say it. Because the message is surrounded with beauty and presented with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. We were very glad to have you with us on Hallmark Playhouse tonight, Lon McAllister. Your performance at Snug was excellent. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. It was nice being here again. You always select such interesting stories for Hallmark Playhouse. How do you manage to do it week after week? Well, it's not easy, but the world's so full of interesting and kindly people, Lon, and we have a tradition of friendliness to uphold, you know. That's right. Hallmark Cards. Say, I think you folks are doing a great thing in reminding all of us of the, the need for mail to the boys in the service. As a former serviceman yourself, you certainly know what it means. You were in the Air Force, weren't you, Lon? Yes, I was. And I remember mail call time was the highlight of our day. I'm sure it is to all the boys, Lon, and we hope our reminders help to increase their mail. What are you having on Hallmark Playhouse next week, Mr. Hilton? Next week on our Hallmark Playhouse, we shall dramatize one of the great legends of America, the story of Johnny Appleseed adapted from a novel by Newell Dwight Hillis, entitled The Quest of John Chapman. And as our star, we have invited that distinguished actor, Lou Ayers, to be with us. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music was composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our story tonight was dramatized by Lawrence and Lee. Until next Thursday, then, this is Jane Shelton saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. The role of Rad tonight was played by Barbara Eiler. Bill Conrad was Rora McGill, Earl Lee Tony, and Judith and Milk Dominey by Virginia Gregg and Ted DeCorsia. Remember inflation is everybody's business and you can help fight it by buying only what you need when you need it, by paying no more than fair prices, asking no special treatment, making no under-the-counter deals by doing a better job at your work, by not raising prices for what you sell. Remember, inflation hurts everybody, but everybody working together can kill inflation. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Lou Ayers in the story of Johnny Appleseed, adapted from Dwight Newell Hillis's The Quest of John Chaplin on the Hallmark Playhouse. the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.